we'll talk about some of the problems out there in the world. Some of the things that are changing, not only here in Macedonia, but in every economy of the world. I'll talk about three things. One, a lot of data. This is true for all of us. Number two is some strange words, but this is the idea of putting new technologies and embracing them too fast without making sure that the company is made. And then the third one is this idea that everything will be connected. But we'll start here. If the products that you make, or the products that you sell, or the products that you move, don't have foundational identification barcode. You waste time, you waste money, you're inefficient. But this is not enough by itself. Increasingly, every single day, there is a need from your trading partners to know more about the products that you make or that you sell. And so now, it is a requirement that everything you make, everything you sell, has not only identification, but also more and more data about it. Not just how big it is, but the ingredients that are inside. Are there allergens? Are there all kinds of thousands of pieces of data? And this is not stopping. But identification and data are the most foundational enablers to deal with new technologies and to help you save costs. I use an example. This is an example from where I am from, uh, which is the US. <clears throat> so months ago, we had a recall. We had a problem with lettuce, a certain kind of lettuce. In one farm, in one place in the country, which is a big country, there was some disease in the lettuce. E. coli is what it was called. It makes people sick. Some 400 people were sick. Three people died. And now the government was very fast to find the farm where the problem was. They found it in one day. They knew exactly where the problem was. And here's what they said on the television in the whole country. They said this. If your lettuce has come from this farm, don't eat it. So everybody goes into the refrigerator, takes the lettuce out and looks, and they don't know if it comes from the farm. There's nothing on the lettuce to say that it comes from the farm. There is no data on the package to say, this is the lettuce that is, is, is dangerous. So now think about this. In an economy that big, one problem on one farm resulted in this. The whole country stopped eating lettuce. So every company that makes lettuce, every company that transports lettuce, every retailer that sold lettuce, was impacted. And the only reason was because there was no good data about the source of the products. Identification and data. It's foundational to all that we're going to talk about today. So I will talk about three trends that are happening in the world. And this, this will, will be some foundations for what we will talk about in the afternoon. The first one is exponentiation of data. In your company, no matter how small or how big, you generate a lot of data. You generate data in the shipping department, you generate data in the manufacturing line, you generate data in the marketing department. And I think it's true for all of you that all of those pieces of data in your company are not well connected. You want them to be, but they're not well connected. But the problem is there is more and more data being generated. As you start to work on social media, as you start with different advertising campaigns, you get more and more data. But how do you connect it? How can you connect the, the, the data about your customers to what they are buying? 
to the advertising that you were making. This is a problem for the biggest companies of the world and for the smallest companies of the world in the same way. It's, but this is one trend that's happening out there. Another trend is a need for improvements in data quality. Now, I, I sometimes work with very big companies. P&G, Unilever, and all these big, big brands. And then sometimes I work with companies that are in the garage of somebody's house. From the biggest to the smallest. And I tell you the secret. The biggest companies of the world have the same problems as the smallest companies in the world. Getting the data and making sure that it is accurate about the product is one of the largest challenges that the biggest companies face and the smallest companies. Today, we will talk a lot about what small companies can do to move faster. Sometimes it's better to be small. So, I talked about the lettuce. Uh, but I will talk about four things that companies are doing now to be more successful in their business. Number one is the most basic thing. All of the products that you make, you will start with basic identification. Put a GT in, you know the barcode on every product. Number two, we will talk about this more later today. Companies are starting to register their products in the GS1 platform, and also in the GS1 catalog here in Macedonia. It is very important to start putting your data into a place that everybody can see, not only here in the country, but also to raise the visibility of your products across the whole world. We heard about the need for export, the comparison to Slovenia, same size, same number of people, five times the export. This is a lot of opportunity for the companies in this room. Exporting more, exporting more than 400 products to 45 countries, exporting thousands of products to more than 100 countries. This is an opportunity here that exists today. But to do it successfully, we need to make that data available. Third, starting to trace the movements of your products. It sounds, it sounds very advanced, but I would guess you are doing it today in your logistic operation. Starting to make those movements of the products more traceable, having better data about them, this is the next step that you will need to accomplish to be able to export more effectively. Last, using that data to sell online. Now, you may not be selling online today, um, but at some point soon, your products will be sold online. And anywhere your products are sold online, the experience is very different than it is in the store today. <clears throat> today, when we go into the store and we want to buy a bear, you can go in and pick up the bear and you can feel it. You know how big it is. You know what the color is. But if you are online and you want to buy this pair, it's much more difficult because you need very clear data about it. If it's yogurt, it is not okay to just sell yogurt online. You must sell Greek yogurt with a certain calories, a certain flavor, kosher. This is a lot of work 